Have you ever noticed how two people can eat the same food and consume the same amount of calories and follow the same plan but get completely different results? One person loses weight quickly but the other person struggles and one can feel steady energy all day but the other person crashes after lunch. Well, in many of these cases, the main difference is a tiny molecule in your gut that silently controls some of the most important aspects of your health and that molecule is called butyrate. When you have a lot of butyrate, your gut is able to seal itself and glucose control and weight loss become much much easier and with more butyrate you may even get protection from Alzheimer's disease and many other neurodegenerative conditions. But when you don't have enough butyrate, well, this is like playing your health game on hard mode. You may get inflammation and constant fatigue and you may get high blood sugars. And there are studies that show that low butyrate levels are associated with many chronic conditions like allergies and insomnia and anxiety and high blood pressure. There's also a link with rheumatoid arthritis and even some symptoms of long COVID. Now, most people have never even heard of butyrate, but it works in your body every second of the day. And the best part is that your body already knows how to make butyrate. You just need to know how to support it. So in this video, I wanna go over how to optimize butyrate for your longevity and your health span, especially when it comes to dementia prevention and glucose tolerance and leaky gut and reduced inflammation. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to boost your butyrate levels in just a few months. So butyrate is a molecule that you get from your gut microbes. And the word butyrate actually comes from the ancient Greek word for butter because when it was isolated by French chemists in the 1800s, they found that it was the butyric acid is what's responsible for the potent smell when butter or milk goes rancid. Now, humans technically cannot make butyrate on their own. It can only be produced by the gut bacteria when they ferment dietary fibers and resistant starches in the large intestine. So the way this whole mechanism works is pretty simple. When we eat certain fibers or resistant starch, which we'll talk about which ones in particular in a little Bit, the food passes on through your GI tract undigested until it reaches the microbiome living in your colon. And this is where you need just the right bacteria to break down and ferment that undigested food. And as a byproduct, you get short chain fatty acids with butyrate being one of the more important ones. And once butyrate is produced, it goes straight to work. The first place it acts is on the gut lining. Your colon cells use butyrate as their main source of fuel. They actually prefer it over glucose. And when colon cells have enough butyrate, they stay healthy and they stay active. And most importantly, these colon cells, they tighten the spaces between them. And on top of that, these cells are then able to produce more mucin, which is a barrier that keeps the inside of the gut separate from the rest of the body. But when butyrate levels drop, well, those same cells switch to a weaker fuel source and the barrier then loses its integrity and structure, which then leads to small gaps between cells. And this is what leads to situations like leaky gut where you get partially digested food particles and bacterial components and other toxins leaking into your bloodstreams, which then triggers an inappropriate inflammatory response, which then leads to all kinds of issues like brain fog and fatigue and joint aches. And it can even lead to things like food sensitivities and skin issues and headaches. So as you can see, it's incredibly important to feed and nurture your colonocytes or your colon cells by giving them enough butyrate. The way I think about it is your colon cells run in butyrate the same way certain cars require premium gasoline. So if you have a performance or a luxury car, it can technically run on lower grade gas, but you get worse fuel economy and you get more wear and tear on the engine long term. So in this analogy, butyrate is that premium gas for your colon cells because they work best when it's there and they fire clean and they stay tight and they do a better job preparing themselves. Okay, now let's talk about your brain because this is where butyrate is surprisingly important. Most people think of butyrate as a gut molecule, and it is, but there's more and more research that supports butyrate's role in brain health and dementia prevention. And butyrate is able to protect your brain through several key mechanisms. First, butyrate maintains the blood-brain barrier integrity, which is important because our blood-brain barrier acts like a protective gatekeeper. It shields the brain from toxins toxins and pathogens while allowing essential nutrients in. And butyrate also keeps 
inflammation level. And as we're now finding out, brain inflammation is thought to be a huge driver in the development of Alzheimer's disease. And butyrate has also been shown to reduce another hallmark feature of Alzheimer's disease, which is amyloid beta deposition. But there's even more benefits. Butyrate also supports brain growth signals. And one of those signals is BDNF. So BDNF stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And it's a protein that is crucial for health and proper function of the nervous system. So what it does is it helps create new neurons and it protects neurons from damage. And BDNF also plays a critical role in this process called synaptic plasticity, which is basically the ability of brain cells to make connections between each other, which is the foundation of learning and memory formation. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any human randomized control trials to confirm the exact efficacy and the exact therapeutic recommendations when it comes to dementia prevention. But the preclinical evidence is definitely intriguing. So mechanistically, butyrate affects gene expression that helps promote neuroprotection. And then if you look at mouse models, supplementations with sodium butyrate improve memory and it reduce amyloid beta deposition in the brain. And when it comes to human data, there was a cross-sectional observational study that showed that higher butyrate intake in adults 60 years or older was linked to better cognitive functioning. Now, this was an observational study, so we cannot infer causation because even if you try to account for all the confounders, there's always the healthy user bias, meaning the people that were eating high fiber foods were they also doing something that may have lowered the risk of dementia, like exercising regularly or not smoking, or did they have better access to healthcare? But we do have other studies that kind of point us in the same direction. Like there was this prospective study that followed over 3,700 Japanese adults for a median of almost 20 years. And they noted that participants in the highest quartile of dietary fiber intake had a 26% lower risk of disabling dementia compared to the lowest quartile. Now let's shift to metabolic health because this is another area where butyrate does a lot of quiet work in the background. So if you've been trying to improve your glucose control or lose weight, this part matters. Your gut makes butyrate when you feed it the right fibers and the right resistant starch. And once butyrate rises, your cells change how they respond to insulin. This is one of the reasons why two people can be on the same diet but have completely different results. So if you have a microbiome filled with bacteria that is able to produce a lot of butyrate, your muscle cells are able to pull in glucose faster and your liver now becomes less insulin resistant. So that translates into lower post-meal glucose spikes. And overall, you just feel steadier and you avoid the late afternoon crashes that come from poor insulin signaling. In fact, there's studies that show that the microbiome of people with type 2 2 diabetes does not have as many butyrate producing bacteria. And there's other studies showing that increased fiber and butyrate producing bacteria improves blood sugar regulation. And butyrate also increases your GLP-1 hormone, which is the basis for drugs like Ozempic and Manjaro. So when you reorganize your microbiome to have more butyrate producing bacteria, you get fuller faster and you snack less and you don't have that nagging food noise that makes weight loss so difficult. And there was a small study, but it was a randomized, quadruple-blind, placebo-controlled trial in Italy that looked at children with obesity and found that supplementing with butyrate for six months resulted in several important changes, like decrease in waist circumference and a lowering of insulin levels and lowering of ghrelin levels, which is the hormone that makes you hungry and is dysregulated in people suffering from obesity. And there's other studies that show that circulating butyrate levels were inversely associated with hemoglobin A1c and the amount of insulin required to maintain stable blood glucose levels in people with type 1 diabetes. And there was another study that showed that just 12 weeks of supplementing with resistant starch increased fecal butyrate levels while reducing fasting blood glucose and A1C. So now that you understand what butyrate does across your body, let's go over how to actually increase it and get all those health benefits. Step one is we need to eat more fermentable fiber and resistant starch because that's what's going to support the right bacteria in your gut to produce more butyrate. So what that will look like is increasing your intake of foods from across four different categories. So first, you need more legumes. So that would be things like beans and lentils and chickpeas. And then you need more fruits. So you especially need to target things like berries and apples and avocados and green bananas. And when it comes to vegetables, we're talking about things like sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts and asparagus and broccoli. And then try to get more whole grains, which you can get from oats and barley and quinoa. Now, if you currently don't eat a 
lot of fiber. Do not increase your intake too quickly because that will give you a lot of GI issues. I actually made a separate video on how to gradually and safely increase your fiber intake up in just 30 days. And I'm gonna post a link to that below. So the second step in increasing your butyrate levels is you need to get more omega-3 fat intake into your regimen. Omega-3s modulate your microbiome and they've been shown to promote the growth of butyrate producing bacteria. And on top of that, omega-3s also suppress bacteria that is responsible for low-grade inflammation. So omega-3s add this synergistic effect because not only does it increase the concentration of the right bacteria and they lower the concentration of the wrong bacteria, but they also work together to strengthen that intestinal barrier, which can then improve your gut health. Now you get omega-3s from fatty fish like salmon and mackerel and sardines, and there's a lot of plant-based sources. So that would be things like flax seeds and chia seeds and walnuts and seaweed. Okay, another way to increase your butyrate levels is adding more aerobic exercise. What's fascinating is your microbiome responds amazingly well to exercise. And this is another lever that you can pull to really help shape your microbiome. So there was a small interventional study that had a group of people complete six weeks of supervised endurance-based exercise training three days a week. And the training progressed from 30 minutes to 60 minutes per session and participants progressed from moderate to vigorous intensity exercise, which they defined as 70% of heart rate reserve. And then that followed by six weeks of being sedentary. And the researchers collected fecal samples at three different intervals. So first they collected them before exercise training period and then right after the exercise period and then after the sedentary period. So when they sequenced the composition of bacteria in the microbiome, what they found was just six weeks of exercise changed the makeup of microbiome in lean individuals. And they saw an increase in short chain fatty acids, which includes butyrate. But those positive changes in the microbiome were then reversed after the subsequent six weeks of being sedentary. So the study suggests that exercise alone, even without dietary changes, can shift your gut bacteria composition and it can increase your short chain fatty acids like butyrate. But these changes do seem to be transient, meaning if you stop exercising, the microbiome does tend to revert back, at least based on the small study. And this is supported by population studies that show that high cardiorespiratory fitness is correlated with increased microbial diversity in the gut and higher fecal butyrate levels, independent of the diet. And that echoes the results of this study that showed that athletes have more butyrate producing bacteria than non-athletes. Okay, one last way to raise your butyrate producing bacteria is with a probiotic. Now, a probiotic is not a substitute for feeding your bacteria with the right foods because it doesn't matter how many probiotics you take, you need to feed the right bacteria with the right foods. And a probiotic will not replace all the benefits we get from exercise. But a very specific probiotic can be a nice add-on to nudge your microbiome in the right direction. So if you were to add a probiotic to your regimen, I would just make sure that you pick the one that includes the correct species that are known to produce butyrate. And I'm gonna list those over here and you can just take a screenshot. All right, I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one.